Hi, this is John with ProAmp Solutions, and we've got another interesting one in the shop today. Uh, this is a Marshall JMC 2000 Dual Super Lead, uh, more commonly known as a, a DSL. And my customer who purchased this amp recently uh, brought it when they received it, turned it on, and, and quickly noticed a, a, a few things. One, it was noisy, and two, the standby switch. Uh, did nothing. It did not turn the amp uh, off. Uh, so uh, he brought it to me to run through and a couple of just quick observations as I've stated before on other videos uh, 70 to 80 percent of the time uh, roughly there is a visual indication of the problem. Take a look at this guy right here. Blown the top off of this electrolytic and I've cleaned it up a little bit. There was some electrolyte material around it. So that, that's an obvious indicator. Uh, looks like uh, reservoir caps uh, in series. So I'm going to have to take this circuit board out. And for good measure, I'm probably going to replace all four of these. Uh, I'm sure they're stressed. And the other thing I noticed is on the standby switch, uh, I took these leads off to test the switch, validating the switch first, and the switch actually works. So when you turn it off, these two break connection. When you turn it on, these two make connection. So something else is going on, uh, perhaps wired wrong. I can see the wires have been numbered by someone else who's had their hands in here uh, working on it. I see numbers uh, on the connector. So someone else has worked on it. It looks like this board has been out of there before. The other thing that concerns me is right here and here. It looks like this capacitor has either been added or reflown, uh, the solder reflowed, uh, because I can see uh, solder resin residue that hasn't cleaned. This obviously is not original. So that concerns me. I believe this here where I can see this wire was added. Uh, into that location that may be fine that might have just been disconnected to remove the board and then up uh, here in this corner there's another modification with a cap and a diode uh, I'll look into that a little bit further but right now uh, the obvious uh, observation and issue and and the underlying cause of the noise uh, is this blown capacitor so Next step, I'm going to take this board out. Uh, I'll uh, do more testing on some of these caps from the bottom side when I take it out. But yeah, that's the next order of business. We're going to get that circuit board out. Uh, we're going to replace these four caps. And then we'll come back and, and rejoin. I may take this. Uh, I'm going to look into this a little bit more here and come back and, and figure out what's going on with why the standby switch is not uh, responding uh, or cutting the, the high voltage um, to that rail. So yeah, this is an interesting one. There's always some folly when I get one that someone else has had their hands in. Uh, I don't want to sound overcritical, but man, it's irritating. It just really frustrates me. Um, the other thing I'm a little concerned about is did this, you know, is there a reason uh, for that is there something else going on so I'll get to the bottom of it and we'll come back and revisit and uh, I'll pass on what I've learned and we'll go on from there welcome to ProAmp Solutions we're back today uh, and I've had my first cup of coffee feeling better this morning yesterday kinda got away from me But I wanted to show you the main board. This uh, is the Marshall DSL uh, that came in. And the symptom when it came in, well, it's a high noise floor. And uh, the standby switch, you turn it off, but the, the amp did not uh, go silent. So we're in the middle of this repair project. And visually, we could see that this particular cap here, the top was uh, blown off of it. And so uh, could immediately tell that filtration was definitely a contributor to the noise floor. And as I got into it and looked at the, the main board in closer detail, 
about a third of the electrolytics had already been replaced uh, and all of these coupling caps uh, have have been replaced um, so my approach to this when I took the board out you want to pay close attention to the board revision the board number uh, JCM 2-60-00 this is an early board uh, one of the first ones and a couple things of note uh, there was a capacitor uh, kind of over this transistor in these two holes which I've removed and opened up those holes that is not supposed to be there on this particular board however I did notice a couple of other mods and this board may have been modded to bring it a little forward to the switching circuit in the newer revision boards which does incorporate a, a capacitor in that part of the the circuit if you look at the schematic but uh, neither here nor there right now um, so, so the learnings uh, from this uh, first off when you do remove a board if, if, if you have to do this undertaking make sure you take high resolution pictures uh, across uh, all the way because you've got you know connectors just everywhere on this board and uh, a lot of them are the same number of pins and you can definitely get them backwards of note as I went into it and this is a lot of what I wanted to share today so this particular client is going to be using this it's going to be on the road gigged uh, moved around kicked around so I not only want to repair it well on behalf of this client I want to make sure it's as road hardened uh, as I can make it under the circumstances so as I got into it and I looked on the underside of the board um, I could see that where the capacitors that were replaced were replaced they had big sort of large blobs of solder on this side of the board uh, unfortunately you can't see that now because I've removed all of the caps I've cleaned all of the resin the board was a mess there was resin everywhere um, just the the flux on the bottom and I've cleaned it all and I've reflowed I don't know about a third of this and I'm not quite done with it but my point is too much solder is not good either you want a nice uh, fillet you know sort of like these this the, you know the solder bead comes up it's good all around the circumference um, creates good mechanical and electrical uh, connection you don't want a great big uh, blob or bead so uh, I've cleaned all that up. I'm going to reflow just a little bit more, but a couple things to note. So when you, this particular board is, it's moderately robust. It, it takes a little bit to, to damage it, uh, but you can see the heat damage right here on the board. It's kind of roasted. And on the top side there, right in this area here, is where I could tell work was done from the top side but I actually don't have a clue what they did or why because the three ceramic disc caps were still here but the pad was missing off the top side of this one so maybe they were replaced with other ceramic capacitors that might be what happened anyhow I had these uh, in stock so I've already replaced them uh, this is a 470 PF 50 volt cap that was a ceramic disc. This is a 470 PF 500 volt cap. This is a plate resistor uh, bypass cap. And then this is a coupling cap that is 4.7 nanofarads or 0.0047. This one uh, you can't see, but the lead on this side, uh, the pad was re removed from the top. So what I like to do in this case, on the bottom side, uh, the traces and pads still had integrity and I've got a good electrical uh, and mechanical connection on the bottom side, but I don't have that on this leg on the top side. So what I do in that case, in this particular case, sorry, this capacitor was wider than the hole spacing. So I bent that lead over 90 degrees flush with the top for about three sixteenths of an inch and then I built a nut bent a 90 uh, to go back down that way once it's soldered on the other side you have some mechanical um, strength on the top 
with that folded over laying on the top. It's not optimal, but it's kind of the best you can do with what you have in this circumstance. Uh, you can see here in this area right here, this one UF uh, cathode bypass cap. Uh, this looks like it was replaced from the top side and with way too much heat and dwell time and these pads are gone. So what I suspect is when this cap was replaced, they did it from the top side, left their iron here too long and took the pad off. Fortunately, there's no traces on the top side there. The traces are on the bottom side here. Um, so we're going to be okay. And what I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to probably rotate this cap 90 degrees, uh, still paying attention obviously to the polarity. But I'm going to lay a flat portion of lead there and a flat portion of lead there. Use that same technique where I flat and then 90 degrees down to give it a little bit of mechanical strength on the top. And I'll probably get some silicone under this one and, and maybe even under that on that side. The other one of concern, there's about four or five areas where pads are gone. This is the other one that's concerning. So this pad right here, you can see uh, the board damage from the dwell time of the iron. Uh, why? I have no idea. What? I mean, I don't know. Anyhow, um, when I put this cap back in, fortunately the trace is on the top side here. So if I leave this cap slightly elevated, I can get a nice fillet uh, on this trace. Uh, and, and I'll probably uh, silicon uh, the gap on the bottom. But I'll be able, if I leave it slightly elevated, to get a nice solder fillet there. Uh, so that will take care of the electrical connection. Uh, this connection actually goes on the other side of the board up to the this bridge rectifier for the DC uh, heater supply for the preamp tubes. I'm going to fold that lead over uh, down here, and I may even run a wire from here to the bridge rect. I, I'm not sure. I, I just I don't like that. That it's disappointing to see. But anyhow, like I say, nevertheless, we're going to move onward and upward and uh, do what we can to make this the very best uh, it can be. So on this one, uh, I've elected to replace all of the capacitors. I've done the work to remove them, test them. Um, you know, most of them were like technically within spec, but all a little low. And the ESRs on them were a little too high for me. It just wasn't great. Um, these two tested at 2200 UF, this one tested at 82 UF, um, and, and so on. Of note, uh, these two caps, if you do uh, recap this board, pay attention. These 22 UF 50 volt caps right here are non-polar. They are bipolar capacitor, so, so that's, that's a call out there. Those are bipolar. And as you can see, just one of my habits techniques is I remove caps, I take a Sharpie, and I write their value uh, on the board just to help me uh, for expediency. In this case, you know, the work was really around removing the caps, cleaning up uh, the flux that was left on the board and uncleaned and, and, and the bottom of the board. There's really no incremental labor to recap the board. I just have to wait on the capacitors to, to show up. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna recap this board uh, no incremental labor. Uh, I've already removed all the old caps and, and cleaned the holes. So we're going to go through the discipline of re recapping this particular board. Not always called for, uh, a little drastic in, in this case, but again, this one was more problematic because of the work that had been previously done on this one. If this particular board had no previous rework, uh, I probably would have replaced these four filter caps, uh, done some other testing, and, and moved on. But because of the amount of rework that was already done previously on this amp, uh, I wanted to take a good look at the bottom side of the board. And there was, you know, it just, it, it was what it was. And uh, it's prepped uh, to the best of my ability, holes cleaned, flux cleaned, and we're ready for new caps. Okay, welcome back to ProAmp Solutions. A uh, quick segment here, I got into the standby switch issue, which when you turn the switch off, 
the amp would not go uh, silent. <clears throat> so I checked the switch and the switch uh, works. So if I take these uh, two leads off and I can show you that we got the meter on uh, ohms and this switch works. So open closed. So the issue is not the switch. But I mentioned that uh, C2 is a little bit notorious. So we're going to, I removed C2. Here it is. It is a 22 nanofarad or 0 0.022 a 630 volt cap. Check this out. Dead short. Dead short. Um, this brings up a, a talking point. So on the Fender amps, a few other amps, they have what's notoriously called the death cap. And that's when a two-prong cord without a wider blade could be put in either direction. So uh, your ground through a capacitor like this could be attached to either the neutral side or the line side. If it happened to be on the line side and that death cap failed and shorted like this, the chassis is energized with line voltage. So um, that's just an anecdotal talking point because unless you're using a safety capacitor made for AC mains, uh, very, very uh, dangerous practice to uh, use like a standard polypropylene cap like this. Now, that's not the circumstance here. That's not the implementation here. It's actually, this implementation here, how they do this is actually fairly ingenious because this is AC. This is before the rectification that comes in on the HT line. It's, it's AC at 60 hertz, a little bit, you know, obviously higher voltage than mains. But what ends up happening is based on 60 hertz and 22 nanofarads, what happens to current? You can use a capacitor as a filter and not generate a lot of heat and reduce the current of AC. So we'll talk about that in another video segment. It's just interesting that that's the implementation here. So root cause of this standby switch not working, a C2 that is a dead short. So we're gonna replace this cap. Uh, let me pull out uh, 22 nanofarad uh, replacement. I think I've got one here handy. Okay. So this is a 400 volt, not a 630 volt, but this is another 22 nanofarad capacitor. And that's what you should see. So this is just an example of uh, a real world example of where a polypropylene cap has failed to a dead short. Hi, this is John. Welcome back. As you can see, I've got this uh, main board uh, recapped. So I've completed that work and happy with the underside and all that is done. And just a reminder, whenever you do work like this, make sure you're take high-res pictures so you get all the cables back in the right positions. So I have the amp actually on right now and as you can hear uh, of what was a high noise floor, I'll be quiet for a moment. Um, there it is. Basically nothing. <laughs> it's, it's really really quiet now. So I've got a 50 millivolt uh, 440 Hertz signal coming in the front and I'm on the uh, classic game channel right now. Let's uh, turn it up just a little bit. Okay, so we can hear the amp. And I wanted to show you I've replaced the 22 nanofarad uh, cap on C2. And here's the standby switch. It now silences and works. 
So the root cause uh, was uh, the C2 uh, failure. So there was no problem actually with the wiring here. It did turn out to be that dead short in, in C2. This C2 actually limit all the current that's going to power the high voltage uh, power tubes and preamp tubes when I turn this uh, up. When I turn the standby switch, it you see it, it constrains the current is actually how this one works. So um, now that we have uh, done that, I'm going to do a little bit more of an audio test and then double check uh, the bias uh, on this amp. So uh, really we're ready to put this thing in the chassis now and I did end up removing and verifying the schematics. If you notice uh, here uh, that cap that was uh, tacked in has been removed. I cleared the holes out there and then there was a mod up right here with a capacitor and a diode that I also uh, removed and made this one true to the schematic. Uh, and the channel switching works fine. We're just going to move forward with this. Uh, all been restored uh, and I'm really pleased with uh, the recap and the, the results. The results are what matters. So we got the standby switch working and we got a completely recapped main board with high quality caps. It is quiet as a church mouse right now. And so I'm going to give it a good solid play test and we're going to get this thing back in its cabinet and uh, biased and uh, back to the client. So another successful repair with uh, good results. Uh, I'm very results driven. So uh, hope this was helpful, uh, especially being able to actually see uh, on a meter what a polypropylene cap looks like or really any cap that's not you know uh, certified for mains use, how it can fail to a dead short and what that would mean uh, in a situation say on a fender or another amp where the power cord hasn't been changed and you could have a line voltage directly on the chassis. Again not the implementation here in the Marshall but just a stark sobering reminder of uh, what that kind of implementation can lead to. So in this case uh, all of our voltages are just everything is just super healthy uh, couldn't be more pleased. The only other thing that I noticed was this ground connector in the back here. When I got the amp, it was actually not connected. It was loose in the back. Um, so, not sure about that. Maybe when it was put back together, it was just kind of hidden. And fortunately, it didn't short anything out. So, all right. We're going to cab it up, bias it. And uh, this project I am going to declare complete. Thanks for joining.